Well, good morning, everyone. It looks like we're starting off uh, par for the course here, flying with Mike. I want to welcome you to the uh, stream. Welcome aboard as we sit in Miami, Florida, getting ready to head up to uh, Piedmont Greensboro Airport in North Carolina. The Flight Factor 767 is going to be the one uh, that we'll be taking. Uh, so uh, we've got it already loaded and pretty much ready to go. So why don't we uh, get in it, hop up into it, and uh, let's get ourselves ready to fly with Mike. Okay, so here we are. Web Gear, welcome aboard. Hope you're having a great hump day Wednesday, and uh, hope you've had a great week so far. Uh, we're just uh, getting ready to fire up the APU and get rolling up to uh, Greensboro. Okay, so like I've said, we've got the aircraft loaded, ready to go. Uh, we'll go over the basics here real quick and then get right into flying with Mike. Um, for that, we need to pull in Sim Toolkit. And uh, Sim Toolkit shows our route here, basically. Now, this is the, uh, um, I always forget what they call this, the uh, flight summary. So it's giving you all of the uh, fixes we're going to be using, the route up here at the top, and uh, different per parameters for each of the airports uh, we're going to. Alternate for today, which probably will not be needed, is going to be uh, Charlotte. Atlanta Center is up, uh, but we got a ways to go to get to them. Okay, so let's take a look at that load sheet. All right, so looking here, we have three people on the plane. Pilot, co-pilot, and uh, loadmaster. Aha, uh -huh, thought I was going to say flight engineer for those of you that have been getting used to the 747-200. Not one on this plane. Uh, and we've got 103,630 pounds of uh, actual payload. So you minus out the 300, it's actually right around 103,000 uh, pounds of cargo. So you see this zero fuel weight of 301,630. And uh, the fuel we're going to need is 33,000. 967, just shy of 34,000 pounds. Finally, our cost index on the run is uh, 143. Um, again, that takes into the weather, uh, factors like the weather, um, uh, company parameters that they need met for this route, and so forth to arrive at that number. Not really an easy one to calculate. It's pretty much done by the company calculators. Um, although I'm sure somewhere out there there's a chart for it. Also, you can see our cruise levels. We will step climb on this one. Again, this is more because we're going to start in a, a westerly direction, which uh, is even numbers. And then about midway through, we're going to get into a westerly direction towards Greensboro, which then puts us on the odd numbers. So mostly that's what's going on, although we're going to step up about 3,000 pounds at, Z at Zerbo, which actually, uh, of memory serves, that's going to be somewhere uh, in this portion of the flight. So we're, you know, almost to where we're going to be fully to the uh, westerly run as we are up here, this is actually the arrival start, uh, Columbia, South Carolina. So we'll see when that actually takes effect. And then finally, some G whiz information if you're curious. Um, okay, uh, mileage for today is 671 air miles. The average wind is 245 at 52, so we're going to have a pretty much a crosswind overall up towards Greensboro at about 52 knots. Um, we have CF engines on today. Here's our fuel breakdown for those that like to see how it broke down. 
And then finally, uh, down here are our routes. And the uh, uh, first one up here is to our alternate simple out to Chesley, and then in on the arrival, and then our actual route you see also up here. And then if you go a little further, you see our times and how the weight broke down on the plane. Now with what Sim Toolkit is showing you is what's on SimBrief. So when you generate a flight plan on SimBrief, you can import it in here and that's what it's showing. So if you were to import, say, one of the other flight plan formats that there are there, like UL, UAL18, only fresh on my mind because I watched the streamer yesterday, it'll look different. And I may try to understand it a little more. It's, it's, the information I'm looking for is difficult for me to find it. So that's why I stay with what's called LIDO, L-I-D-O, Lima, India, Delta, Oscar. I know what I'm looking for, where it's at, minus a couple figures, um, especially with the Airbus. So that are actually in the flight plan if you use UAL-18. There's other ones for those of you who might be real-world airline pilots. You know them. You know what they are. Have at them. I just use the uh, default one. All right, and with that, uh, let's get flying here, shall we? All right, so I've got the uh, Sim Toolkit up at the top, so you can kind of get an idea where we're at. Of course, Sim Toolkit now has an update. All right, well, it's going to wait. Um, so back to where we were. So we're loaded. Now, for that loadout that we saw, 103,000 pounds, let's come down here. There's one of two ways to get the uh, uh, electronic flight bag. This one under plugins which is what I'll do this time. And up, oh, it's not showing down there because it's right here. Or you can click on it right there. All right, and then you just click ops, ground. All right, so when we loaded uh, to get that 103,000 or what I more say, let's get it to the zero fuel weight we're re required, 301,630. Um, first off, I, my, I zero out the pallet number and the cargo weight. We'll explain these in a minute. They're, for those new to Flight Factor, they're not what you think. Well, one of them is, in a way, the other one is not what you think. However, so I'll minus my uh, 301 630 from the uh, zero fuel, which I think is 198 000 or 188. I can't ever remember. Okay, once I have that number, you divide it by 9,800 pounds. Now, why that number? Each pallet you load in here, so each number is 9,800 pounds of cargo. So, by dividing it out, we'll get the numbers to the left, which in this case was 10. Then I take... Um, the number is now in my zero fuel weight. Uh, I'm going to again subtract that from the 301 uh, 630. And whatever that difference is, folks, goes in my cargo weight. That is not the weight per pallet. That is in what I call bulk weight to bring us to the number Simbrief is uh, dispatching us out with. Little confusing, yes, but it really is simple. Once you have it loaded, click Optimize CG. We started at like 25 Mac, it dropped us to 20 after. And then I always click Maintenance. And then when you're satisfied, the only things you need to make sure, you have to have the aircraft with stairs, you have to have the LSU on, uh, the GPU is not a requirement, but it gives you electricity on the plane, so it's advisable. Fuel truck, so you can put the fuel in. That's the obvious one. Um, and then the ACU is an air conditioning unit. Up to you, but you have to have the loader. 
So the loader, the fuel truck, and the LSU, and stairs are all required on this page. And I just click open all. You got to have the, the uh, lower cargo doors open, the main cargo, and the front uh, passenger door. Otherwise, it won't load you, folks. It'll tell you to. So, just some uh, quick tips here while we uh, get ready to go. So, again, let's look outside. Nice shot straight on. So, you can see currently we've already got the lower doors closed. Uh, we've already got uh, the chocks in. Uh, duh. The ACU is still hooked up. We're not on APU yet, as is the GPU. And then here's the loader unit. Again, we're used to seeing that on cargo planes. And your uh, set of stairs. Nice job driving there. That must have been Jay Drums uh, behind the wheel of that fueler. Anyway, just have to point out some of the silliness the uh, AI does. Oh, look at that. Parks right on top of a Mercedes. Boy, I would have loved to have been able to do that with the semi. But anyway, um, continuing on. So what we're going to do now, get rid of the loader. We're going to start buttoning this thing up. But I want to start the APU really first. So the checklist is really simple. Uh, what we're going to do, get up here to the overhead. We're going to turn on all pumps with fuel in it, which, again, all of you that know when I fly this airplane, Texaco quality driving, yes, sir, web gear, it sure is. Uh, but anyway, we're going to turn on our fuel pumps. Again, 757, 767 drivers, this is awesome. It's right here. Uh, the others, you can get to it, but it's just nice. Where you're going to turn the fuel pumps on at, the numbers are right there. Obviously, I don't need to turn on the center pumps. Okay. Next up, we're going to click the APU to on. And then start. Okay. And then if you want, you can come down here, click status down here so you get this page. I got I was on bad someone. Who is talking on my channel? <laughs> okay, and you can see it's spooling up up here. Once we're spooled up, then we'll uh, close everything up, get the uh, generator and uh, ACU out of here. I've already got the pushback scheduled. All I got to do is call it. Just waiting here. We're almost uh, loaded up here. All right, and there we are stabilizing. Let's come up here go to the APU. Now the reason nothing's flickered yet is we're actually still on the ground power unit. Okay, so we want to make sure our APU bleed is on and our center isolation. So left, right, center have to be on to be able to you know, get started. And then, okay, so APU bleed, external power. Now you're going to see it flicker. Now let's switch the power from the GPU over to the APU, as well as now the air conditioner. So up here, we click the ACE and that. And uh, we're just about ready to go. So you can see everything but chalks and the staircase are gone. Now today's departure will be eight right. So what I want to do at this point, we're going to kind of go for this view. And that's going to be this runway right over here, folks. Go over the uh, departure real quick, and then we'll get in and see the FMC. All right. It's kind of an interesting departure. I'll, I'll give it that. All right. So from the eights, oops, got to go up here. 
First off, uh, our frequencies, you can see what Miami departure should be. Don't count on that, folks. On VATS, at least. Our transition altitude, that's a given anywhere in pretty much all of North America. Um, and then the requirements for this, which we meet with the DME IRU. And we are a jet. Okay, no um, uh, altitude restrictions here. Um, however, there are some as we work out. We'll see that here in a minute. So, from the eights, we're going to climb on a heading of 093. 520 feet, we go direct sea salt. Then on to track 008 to deals. Then on to Soso on a track of 349. All right, so I'm going to stop there, and you're going to see why here in a minute. So you can see we come off to Sea Salt, to Deals, to Sozo. Then we're f we're going to be on vectors. Now I've done a little different in my FMC; just makes it easier on my eyes. That's all. We can still vector, folks. If he says FedEx 811, need to turn right, heading 090, dial it into my heading, punch heading select, boom. We're off to heading a 090. However, or otherwise, we're going to go straight to. Uh, um, oh, welcome aboard, ITZ Mario 1023. Welcome. We thank you for following the stream. We uh, hope you enjoy the flight as we FedEx up to uh, Greensboro. So, uh, anyway, back to our chart. A second. Uh, so, from Agers, we're going to go. You can see the restrictions, by the way. Once we get up here, there's restrictions. Uh, between 8 and nine, uh, 19,000, above 13, above 15, above 23. So, basically, keep climbing. That's what it's saying. All right. And that pretty much wraps up our departure, folks. And where we're located. Where the triangle is will come out on Kilo, cross over at, uh, uh, not sure what text, Kilo 1, Lima 1, or departure. Pretty simple taxi. We'll get into the V here in a minute. And I did not have charts up. Why did you fail me there, computer? There we go. So there we are at the FedEx ramp, farthest. I think we're the farthest spot over. Uh, we'll push back, take K, Kilo, Kilo 1, Lima 1, 8 right, away we go. And then out we go here. It's almost direct sea salt. Deals, Soso, Eggers, Hertz, Arps. From here, we just continue on. M Mart, N Wood, Seal Z, one way. And we'll make sure we're above those levels as we go along. Okay. See a little activity here as we got a uh South American seven forty seven taxi. Nice. All right, so let's hop back up in the cockpit here. Finally, what I want to go over is our takeoff speeds. Okay, V1 is going to be 149. That is the speed. Past it, we commit the flight. Before it, we should have enough runway to stop on it. Keyword, should. Now, the one thing I've been told by a lot of pilots, folks, I only play a commercial pilot on TV, I was only up to the level of a private pilot, so V speeds I, I never cared about. Because we're going to get off the ground usually at 1,000 or 2,000. Alright, so V rotate, obviously that's the speed we're going to rotate. But anyway, V1, you're going to know if you're going to reject or not prior to 149 and you should have already initiated it however if for some reason it like 
boom, hits you right at 148. You haven't crossed it. You've got time to pull the throttles back, get her into, re, you know, the rejected takeoff mode. And uh, be like Yosemite Sam trying to tell the, the horse or the cow to stop. V2 is the speed at which to clear a 50-foot obstacle, so that's 157. So if that's our go, here's our trim for the day, 4.0, and our CG sits at 20. Let me clear that one off and uh, see where we are in this checklist. All right, so let's uh, come outside again. The only thing left to do is, oh, we haven't closed the main cargo door. Let's get that Let's get the rest of the plane uh, tightened up. And they're closing right now. All right, everything's sealed up. Let's go back to the ops page, click ground. Let's kill the stairs. All right, so as you can see, everything but the chocks are gone. So what I'm going to do at this point, get my ACARS program ready to go. It's one of those you don't want to do it prior to loading the aircraft. Because it's going to take it as you've air refueled, and, uh, well, you don't air refuel cargo planes these days. Close that. All right. And simply, all I got to do is click start. We're loaded dispatch. I just like putting that in for the fun of it. K-M-I-A and K-G-S-O. Look at that thing lumber into the air. Wow, folks. Oop, went the wrong. That's a 747 for you. All right, let me uh, throw a flight plan on here. Three two zero. Down lane. It's just one level more that he uh, uh, puts into it. All right, and we'll go back here. Minimize it. We're ready to go. Okay, to start up, requirements are very simple. Make sure your packs are off. And get your tow vehicle on the way, so better push back. Great news, Captain. Your tow's coming. And we got the smarty pants pushing us back today. This will be fun. Uh, tow vehicle's on the way. Eight cars is started. And uh, parking brake will get turned off when he shows up, which he's right there. We'll get it in a second. Beacon's on. Let's get those chalks out of the way, even though it will automatically do that. Things clear up here. Oh, the mighty Texaco man's back. How many fences did he take down this time? <laughs> All right. Looks like the doors and hatches are closed and we're ready to connect. Cleared to connect. And again, it's Mario 1023. Welcome aboard. Let's see who else we have. Did I miss any chat here? All right. Uh, any tow? Welcome. Taxi please 06. Welcome aboard. I hope you all enjoy the uh, run up to uh, Greensboro. Go. And then once we push back, all we got to do, folks, come up top here. We're already set for ignition one. It's an odd day. Odd number for the igniter. Welcome aboard, Captain. Toes connected, bypass pens inserted. Go and kill the parking brake when you're ready to go. We'll get that in just a second. And then we'll just go to ground. We'll 
come down here switch over right now these magenta marks the the uh, spool up has to get up to and at least to it if not past it slightly then you turn your fuel control switches on right here okay here we go folks parking brake off here comes the pushback light them up okay now if you're one that wants to light them up now, go right ahead, as he says. Otherwise, I wait a little bit. I want to get out in towards the lane a little bit more. Just to be safe, I don't ingest any of those cans. Or Texaco trucks, as they are driving kind of uh, erratically here on the field. All right, he's turning us, so I am going to go ahead, get started with getting the engines going. Okay, again, packs are off. I'm going to go to auto, and then ground. I'm down. I'm going to blow this up to help you see it better. There's our fuel control switch. Not yet. It's around 2021 when it crosses it. There we go. Fuel switch on. Okay. And that flicker was now number two's generators taking over the power and uh, air at the moment. We're just waiting for it to stable. And he's going to push us back a little bit here. Get us all nice and straight for the taxiway. And to make sure the wheels just about done here. Go ahead and set your parking brake. That the tires aren't uh you know, you push it back a little bit to make sure the tires haven't rolled under. And the we're disconnecting the toe. Give me just a moment. Okay, parking brake set, he's disconnecting. We'll go for number one. Again, down here we'll watch. Okay. Again we're waiting for about twenty twenty one on N two. There we go. Oh, okay. For a second there, I thought my speakers were getting this. Okay, we're just waiting for it to stabilize. We'll let him disconnect. We got good engine starts. Generators are now on. And basically what they're going to go through, folks, they're going to lower the aircraft. This is one of those that lifts the nose gear up, and that's how they move it around. They're lowering it down. Once it's safely on the ground, they release it, and then they go And away. we're disconnected. Signal and pin on the right. Take it easy and have a safe flight. Okay. And what we're going to do, wait for him over here to show us that pen. That lets us know we're free and clear to taxi. Won't have any pins locked in. Here he comes. And right out this window here. And the pin is hanging from here. From our vantage point, it's hard to see, but it's there. All we have to do, or what I usually see, is give him a quick flash of the uh, headlights, or taxi lights, headlights, whatever you want to call them. And uh, we're ready to continue on with the after start. Okay, so tow vehicle's been sent away. We're going to come up here. We'll just do it all right here. Your left, right hydraulics. Whoops, that one didn't push. There we go. Turned on. Make sure all of your demand switches are in auto. And no switch, no lights up here. Um... 
any ice. We're not running with any. Keep it off. Left and right engine bleeds on. Left and right packs on. Okay. Now the APU bleed can get turned off, as can the APU. Generator to off. Then we got just a few more checks, folks, and we're ready to taxi. Go down here to the center. Auto brakes located right here. Reject takeoff. It's right in, right next to your lower A cam on the left side. Uh, taxi. Left and right VOR should be auto, and they are. Left and right uh, flight directors are already on. Stab trim. I'm going to do is go to this viewpoint, and again, it's right here, 4.4. We're pretty much set for that, so we'll keep it as is. Flaps to five. Okay, it's not being nice. Hang on. There we go. And then we can make sure it shows up here. EFIS control make sure we get flaps five we don't have any lights like the 737 to say they're set needles not moving we should be good and looking at everything it looks like they're set EFIS panels that's these here folks either side of the throttles okay We want the DH at 200. They're both at 200. The range, 20. They're both at 20. They're in the map mode, which is one from all the way over. Terrain weather off. Terrain and weather radar displays off. That's these two switches. Now, here's the funny part. It's going to ask you to turn the weather radar on. We're not displaying, though. Finally, uh, this isn't a good view. We'll do it this way. Our radios are set for Vatsim Unicom, Oscon Unic or a Guard Channel, another Real World Unicom Channel, and the International Mayday Guard Channel. Now, it's not very easy to see because it's lit up by the sun. Can't get in its way to change it. Anyway, you want to pull this up and turn it a couple. That's how you'll hear ATS, and they'll hear you as well. And then we're going to go ahead and get over to TA on our transponder. Come back up here, and let's get taxi. Okay. Oh, and the one thing I didn't do is the flight check. Flight controls. That's this section of your lower A cam right here next. To, well, I have it set up so I see my brake temperatures as well. Uh, so basically, we just left, right, left. And every time I go left or right, I let it stop in the middle to make sure we center the, the stick centers. Not what you're seeing on the screen, my actual physical flight stick here. Left. May even want to let go of it to see if it'll come to the center. If not, you're going to have a fun flight. Okay, APU is off. Get back on engine. We're ready to go. Brakes off. Taxi lights on. And let's.
let's give her a little oomph. She goes. Just needed a little more reinforcement. Okay, and again, we're going to taxi all the way down to the end of this runway right to our left, cross over it, and be using the next one. Hetman 777. Correct. It is okay to set your parking brake on the runway. Many aircraft do this in real world so they can spool up to 80% or 60% whatever their checklists call for. Once they're stabilized, they release the brakes, hit toga. So, yes, Hitman is good, and welcome aboard. First time chat from you. We appreciate you here on the show as we uh, taxi out for Greensboro, GSO. And we'll be actually doing that on our takeoff. All right, now, just give you a little flavor here. This is all FedEx. Down here is some of the feeders. All the way to the end here is where UPS comes into. All the way to the other end of the taxiway by uh, two, the uh, two sixes is the uh, Centurion, whatever the heck they call themselves this week. Uh, they seem to change their name a lot. Uh, but they're down at that end. I believe that's the freezer everyone talks about that's big. If it's not, it's the one along one, two, three, zero. And my dad, after he retired from uh, U.S. Airways Express and FlexJet, uh, worked for a, a company that helped train Airbus pilots overseas, uh, overseas pilots here. All right, I don't see anyone lined up on my runway here that I'm crossing a left. Just go ahead and scoot across. And I believe, yes, there is enough room for us to hide out in between. Okay, and that facility I was talking about was right here. Either of those two are huge. Um, and uh, where a lot of the flowers and produce and all come in from around the world that come to Miami, go through there and then into the country by truck. Look at all these. We actually got some pretty good... Oops, um, Got him on my. Okay, what I'm going to do is bring her to a halt here. Okay, and we're going to go ahead, stab the brake. Okay, I want to take a look here real quick. Make sure nobody's coming at us that way. I see one over there in the horseshoes that I like to call uh, off of runway 927. All right, so we're going to get into the uh, before takeoff stuff, though. Okay. Uh, speed brake. Let's make sure that sucker is off, and it is. Flaps again, set five and five. All we got to do is roll over. We're at five, and the gauge shows five. Uh, we'll get the landing lights moving here in a second. MP or MCP, we'll get the auto throttle set, LNAV, VNAV set. All we're doing is arming them, kind of like when you're coming in for an ILS approach. You're cleared for the approach. You can punch uh, either localizer or approach depending what's available active and it shows up in white once it becomes active it goes green so 
same same concept here once we're airborne they're not active till the autopilot goes on and so long as i'm within the parameters and so they become active and we fly them and finally transponder t-a-r-a -A. one more notch to go boom a t a t a 20 we're good One last check of the altimeter here. 3018. Oh, did it come down? Sure did. Okay, I'm clicking this set screw, folks, so it'll set the one on the first officer side. Dial this one down. see now they're both equal now if it's a like say we're all of a sudden it went to 2992 which it'll do on take uh, a transition so we don't have to just scroll over or look over and turn it all we have to do is click the set screw when you see that arrow click on it it'll set it over there this set screw right next to speed that's your toga all right, so let's get flying with Mike. Miami traffic, uh, FedEx 811 Heavy, departing runway 8 right. Giving people a chance, and I need to get a plug-in. TCAS given to X-Pilot, there we go. And we're clear. Here we go, folks. Laps 5. Now, what we're going to do is roll... When we uh, throttle up, we're going to go right even with the uh, circle here. Once we're stable on both engines, then I'm going to hit the toga button. Okay, get the strobes on now. So let's roll out on the runway and set those brakes up again. And right now, folks, just as kind of a give you what's going to happen, once we get up uh, in close to South Carolina, Atlanta Center will be online. We'll get that programmed in here in a minute. Oh, another South American. Taka, 7088 is here as well. Let's get on here. We're not going to be eating up the whole runway like is, is sometimes possible. We're going to have about 2,000 feet. I'm going to guarantee you this plane will have more than 2,000 feet. Of course, it'll make me a liar this time out. Let's see how we're doing on the lineup. Oh, let's get over here. Now, if you are worried that you don't have, you know, that you're close to the end of the runway in your distancing, which does happen, folks, don't worry about getting straight. You can do that as you're building speed up, get her into the center. So here, I'm going to have well over 2,000 feet of runway easily. So, all right, so here we go, throttling up. Okay, I'm not sure what that was all about. Got no warnings. Let's do a recall to be safe. Okay. Okay, now you see how it's lined up here with these half circle kind of things? It's an easy eye candy thing. Parking brake off. We're rolling. Here we go. And start your clock. Toga set. I always push my flight uh, throttles pretty much to the forward just in case because we're about to cross 80 and it'll do that if you don't. It'll do that if you do. And then it'll resume. Thankfully, it's not like LDS, which will set the uh, brakes up. 
Okay, down the runway we go. Okay, it's going to make a liar out of me. P1. Rotate. Nice and easy. Gear up. Positive right. Heading is zero nine three. I'm going to go ahead and let center autopilot have fun. That way we get to do this. FedEx eight eleven heavy clear Miami. Away we go, folks. Okay, we're coming up to... Uh, what was that first fix? Seesaw, I think it was called. Sea salt. That was close. Okay. And flaps. One. Go to climb... Too. And what that basically does, folks, is pull the power back, lower the nose, so we're not climbing like the space shuttle, and give a little, wear, save a little wear and tear on the engines. Okay. We'll hold flap one here for a little bit. While we make the turn in the inlet here. Intercoastal waterway, basically. You might Majamians know it as where all the cruise ships go and cargo ships. <laughs> Something a little unusual for me is I normally get up to the next fix and then we start turning back to the west again, but we're not. We're going to just ease a little to the west, but mostly north. Okay. And again, so so, I have taken out the vectors. We are to, we'll just continue on to acres. And we'll go flaps up. Now, one of the big things I love about this plane, uh, this is actually becoming one of my more favorite planes, uh, mainly because what I like to set on takeoff uh, once I'm airborne is 240 in my climb, so that if you're with VAs that are trying to be as realistic as possible, even though they're missing the mark, because uh, you're not allowed to fly in your pajamas with a beer. Um, anyway, um, They gig you if you go above 250. Well, if you're flying a heavy, as in this case, you may have to fly 260. Or, in a 747 or bigger, 270, 280 below 10,000 feet. It's perfectly fine. Uh, you just get prior approval, which usually because it's that aircraft, they have it. And away you go. Okay, flaps up. And... All we're waiting for is 10,000. So I like 240 because it gives you that 10 knot buffer to keep you from pumping over. Now the airline I fly with, FedEx Express, they're not too big in particular on that. Oh, I'm sure they want to be, or there's some pilots there that want to be, uh, not necessarily management. They're there to, for us to have fun. And you know, that's what a VA should be. It's a place to have fun. So, I think I just saw something trigger here. Hang on. Well, oh, J Drums put a prediction in. Uh, 
Hetman Triple Seven. Uh, Hetman, uh, the parking brakes, again, harkens to what I just said about VAs. Some people are, they, they don't understand. Yes, parking brakes can be on because you need to throttle up. You release your brakes and go. Now, what they may be wanting you to do is just put your brakes on, throttle up to 60, 70 percent, and then let them go. Either way works. So, you know, it's your call. You know how I how I handle that a lot, Hetman Triple uh, Seven. You're the pilot in command, not them. You make the call, not them. <laughs> so, go out there, have fun. That's the whole goal of the whole thing. And we just crossed ten thousand, or we're about to. And I'm sure they'd be going at me. Oh my gosh, he's turning his lights off before ten thousand, Muffy. Yeah, I did. Oh, and I'm going to let my car go walk a mile. Because I can. <laughs> I got flight attendants back there to keep them rolling. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it, you're out here to have fun. Uh, so, hep, man, uh, if you want to set the brakes up, get your power set and release them that way, power to you. And if they want to talk to me, hey. I'm always available, somehow, some way. Discord. Um, I haven't given my email out yet. One of these days, I'm going to set up one specifically for the channel. I just one of those things in the year and a half I haven't really worried about. But they can come on here and let me know. Uh, I need to hang on a second. Trim back to normal. There we go. So, and J Drums, I see uh, that minus 99. I also see you love it when I fly this plane. By the way, J Drums, Double Lot is our moder one of our moderators. We also have the automatic Streamlab, Stream Elements, and Nightbot. So, watch yourself. I've got four eyes on you. Okay, one eye, two eyes, and four Autobots. And they're not transformed either. I know. So, but anyway, folks, we are on our way. Uh, see if we got anyone else out here. I'm looking through the chat since we have some time here as we get up towards transition. That's our next uh, uh, milestone on this flight, if you will. Um... Here, I'm going to get this into a more preferred status. There we go, showing what's ahead of us. I'm actually going to just get outside. So, I don't know if that's a little loud for you all or not. Back it down. There we go. Get a nice hum of the GE engines out there. All right, I see we're getting weather for... GSO. Perfect. All right, so we folks have an hour and a half to go in this uh, climb out. So what I'm going to do here, bear with me a second. I'm going to get a little bit of music running in the background. It's going to be very low, could be hard to hear. And uh, just kind of let it be there. Let's see. Give it a little bit. Okay. Well, that's perfect. So we'll just let that run. If it's too loud, hey, I got a little further I could pull that lever back on it. But uh, we're on our way, folks. See where we are in transition level. 4,000 to go. Okay. Bring Sim Toolkit up here. Change something on it real quick.
This way you'll be able to... The uh, mode we were in before, the flight summary, doesn't show you the traffic around us. So that's what I wanted to get set up. And... There we go. So now you can kind of see where we are, what we're doing. Got a couple thousand to go here to transition. We're basically... Uh, uh, this jet triangle here working our way up along the line you can see where atlanta center is we're basically going to hit them at the north carolina line if they don't yell at us earlier so um we'll definitely get into cruise but you can kind of see the green on the map is fat sim the blue icons like this one and this one and this one a couple over here and one up ahead on our route uh those are sim toolkit pilots now not to say like me as a vat sim pilot i'm not running sim toolkit as well so that gives you an idea there's a lot of people out here folks if i start going back a lot of blue that aren't are just sim toolkit not any other service. Now this will also show POSCON. I think I have it still set for IVAO and Pilot's Edge. Not 100% sure. I'm not sure if Atlanta's, or if, yeah, if they're gonna talk to us. Man, we are, it'll be interesting, because, man, we are like right on the edge. I thought Charlotte was under them. That must be Charlotte. Ah. Might have learned something. Okay, time to go home, folks. You all have a great day. No, just kidding. <laughs> all right, just kidding, folks. We're on our way. A uh, little over an hour and 15 minutes to go. We are through 18,000, so now you will get to see it. So I'm going to zoom in here, and set our altimeter to 2992. It's old school, folks. Don't get that nice little button that says STD to push. Got to set it. Okay, now you just saw over here, Alt Disagree. That's a feature that has uh, actually a result of, well, let me put it this way. Any feature on a plane is usually the result of something bad that's happened in the past. Um, where this one is set up on the pilot, on the captain, and the first officers doesn't agree. So as you can see, I'm now set at 2992. First officer is still there. In the right circumstances, when the mishap occurred, had they agreed, the mishap, one of the things that came out of it, it told them that they weren't on the same page. So, now, if they had this feature, you would never have to worry about it. <laughs> the set screw is right there, folks. It's above this black dot. Now, be honest with you, I'm not sure what that is in real life, if that's the light over the gauge or what. Uh, anyway, we click it, altitude disagree goes away, and voila, 29.92. Magic. However, you do have to manually set the uh, backup. Yeah, they had a problem with their altimeters not reading right, and... That's what it, one of the boil downs that came out of it. Uh, folks, if car accidents were investigated like airplane accidents, I'm here to tell you folks that one, there wouldn't be many bad drivers on the road and two, there wouldn't be many bad cars on the road either. And I had the map up, ah. Uh... So again, get that I'll just 
move this back up. Hang on. Okay, that's where we were. We're disagreeing because the other one's right. This one's wrong. So, we'll click it, and they match. Oh, come down. Okay, now they disagree. We click it again, and voila, they're back to 29.92. All is well with the world. <clears throat> and again, you saw this click spot. That's the one I clicked for Toga. Take off, go around. Set your uh, takeoff power. In this case, takeoff power was, and, well, this was, okay, 101.3% on N1. I can already see hands going, uh oh, sir, you can't go faster than 100%. In an airplane, you can't. Um, and that's why we bring it back. They can actually throttle up more than 100%. Case in point, look at the N1 right now, folks. 106.2. So. Just so you're aware. All right, so we're coming up to CZ. As we make our way uh, northward to uh, GSO. One hour-ish to go. seemed like it got louder and I never moved it. Okay, that could just be me. Alright, so let's get a better panoramic view here of the main cockpit here. What I'm going to start doing is setting up for cruise. So I'm going to push range out on the pilot side to 40 uh, to 80 my bad it'll show 40 in the middle we'll go up to selector 40 which will show 20 over here and hang on I gotta get a look at them okay so I want this one on terrain this one on weather now the nice thing in the most 767s this spot right here is where the weather radar is but again, it can be superimposed on your nav displays. But there are some pilots that don't want that. But I would love it, but I don't have Active Sky. All right, train radar is up. All right, so we are cruising along here, folks. Morsaki, welcome aboard. Hope your uh, hump day Wednesday going well. Uh, may you have a better week ahead of you. And folks, if you want, uh, sometimes I know life can creep up on us and we don't have enough time to stick around. If you want to throw a prediction in. Now granted, we don't have prizes. Uh, it's simply the uh, exclamation mark predict, the minus sign, and the number, not, uh, whatever number you want, and that's how you make the prediction. All right, so we're coming up on our cruise. Lights out. Oh, that's what that is. Okay. All right, I've learned two things. Now I'm overdoing it. I'm going to have to... Figure out why she blew through. See if she'll compensate for it first. It's significant. Okay, looks like it did compensate back. We're level at 32,000. All right, and Zerbo is 35 miles ahead of us. We'll uh, make sure, up, oh, take that back, 80 miles ahead of us. Once we cross that, folks, we'll go up to 35,000. Per the flight plan, 
unless ATC says otherwise. But folks, we are now level and cruise. Uh, looking still for about an hour arrival time into Greensboro. So sit back, relax, enjoy the ride, folks. see what it looks like outside the uh, behemoth here Flying up the Floridian coast. We're going to be passing Savannah as we uh, head on northward. And once we step climb up, folks, then we're going to go ahead and plug in our um, arrival information, which currently easy way so you can see it. I know it's been cycling through pretty good. The block to arrival off of uh, Columbia's VOR. So and we're planning runway 23 left. Unless, well, unless the weather changes. Let's go ahead and get the latest and greatest out of there. 220 at 11, 10 miles, and a few clouds at 4,300 is the worst we have to deal with. So yeah, not a bad run in at all, folks. Okay, so 220, as long as we hold that, we're good. Right, let me take a look at something. Currently getting up towards the uh, Space Coast here. Uh, we got a little ways to go. It's kind of where the Mijami Center goes to Jacksonville Center. So that's where the Space Coast is. I believe that's Melbourne right there, the airport that the nose is kind of going past. Um, and then. Uh, Push on up a little further and we'll see maybe Kennedy. I'll be honest, I never looked at it from this vantage point. Let's kind of swing out here. But folks, that band of water right here is called the Intercoastal Waterway. You can run that from Maine all the way around Florida and up into uh, the Gulf uh, towards Mobile and that, and you're never out technically quote the ocean. Now there's some parts where it gets really hard to figure out is it really there or not. But yeah, it's supposedly there for that. I don't know. But uh, I know when I lived in Charleston, South Carolina, there was a, a part of the intercoastal uh, all over the place. But anyway, part of it there. Isla Palms, uh, forget the one to the south, uh, but yeah. This, I think, is Patrick Air Force Base right there. Cocoa Beach, the yeah, I Dream of Genie fans. Then out, I believe, in this area is the Space Coast. NASA and all is. Of course, I'm probably wrong, and it's probably up here. But anyway, uh, also those of you that uh, a lot of the Disney cruises originate out of Cape Canaveral. Um, so, again, for those of you who've gone up, I highly recommend them if you have kids. Uh, they are phenomenal. It's Disney, folks. You walk on Disney has your kids. Safe and sound having the time of their life be it a girl with the princesses be it a boy with uh, everything else so 
they are not going to be hurting or finding fun on a boat. So, and there is an area for adults on there, so you too can enjoy the vacation. But anyway, so we're getting ready to go there. Probably, uh, let's take a look this way. Continuing around. That could be the Orlando area right up in here. Could be, but I'm not sure. Actually, it could be very much so looking at the sim tool kit. So. All right, well, let's get into cockpit here. Zerbo should be coming up. Uh, 32 miles. So let's go ahead and get this thing stepped up. All we do is set for 35,000. Then what I do is come down here, click cruise, click cruise there, and line select there, execute, and you should see a climb started. Okay, now the progress page here on the FMC gives you your two, if you look at it carefully, those of you that just participated and crossed the pond, you may be seeing something here. It's telling you your next fix. Now, the 747 and 777 actually have the one you just passed. So your position report would be position passed, next, such and such time, next, such and such time, and how much fuel? Pretty nifty, huh? If you click next page, you get some other things about the flight, like your tailwind component, crosswind, your overall wind, and so forth. True airspeed, uh, altitude temperatures, and so forth. Fuel tank temperatures, so. Anyway, a little quick look at it. And once we level off, we're going to get in and start working up the arrival. As it is, we are 56 minutes out. starting to level off at 35. All right, so let's get into this now and start talking about our arrival. Because it'll sneak up on us, folks, if we're not careful. All right, let's get charts. We'll start there. Okay, you can kind of see where we are on the map. Orlando's right in here, the Space Coast right in here, folks. For those of you who are aware of that. Anyway, we're going to track up again. We just pretty much keep that Atlantic Ocean off to our right for the most part. Till we get up here by Charleston, uh, Savannah, Charleston area. Then we start headed direct uh, for... Uh, Columbia, South Carolina, and then are just into. Oh, excuse me. Did not mean to yawn in y'all's ears. Now, wait a minute while you all yawn. Anyway, um, Columbia is where we start the arrival. So, what I am going to do here is I'm going to also bring up the FMC. Okay, so we got both here. Making that turn at Zerbo. Uh, get my heading set. There we go. All right. So what we're going to do is click Departure Arrival here on the uh, uh, FMC. Now you notice, whoa, why aren't my arrivals showing up? Well, we're on Miami's arrivals. 
So what you got to do here is click index, then GSO. Now we're seeing, oh, look, there's the block two. Okay, so we'll click that and we're transitioning off that. The block two looks like this. I'm going to kind of blow it up here so it's readable more. So again, GSO, Piedmont Triad, Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, again, the ATIS, I find about a hit or a 50 50 hit or miss of working. Um, when it does, great. It ha Every time I say it isn't going to work, it works. Every time I say we're not going to eat up all the, you know, um, that amount of runway, it eats it up. <laughs> Gotta love them. Uh, again, transition. We're in North America. It's 18,000, folks. Real easy. It's not like Europe where you got to hunt and peck for it. All right, moving down. We're on the Block 2 arrival. And we're going to be using the Columbia VOR approach. Or transition. Okay, so that's here, 114.7. We'll track to Sand Hills. The Block 2 to Greensboro VOR. We could. I prefer to kind of get out here and come in on the arrival. We'll see how it works out. Okay. Now, I don't see any specific directions as to what we need to do. The only big one on here is Tenny, which is uh, 74 miles off the Columbia VOR. 21,000. Mandatory. That's an expect, so we should see it when we program it in. Also, block, B-L-O-C-C, -C, off the Sand Hills VOR at uh, 20 miles. That's 11,000 and 250, so they want to slow before 10,000, and we have to follow the chart, folks. Then we're direct Greensboro until vectored for the arrival. All right, let me quickly... All right, so let me uh, go ahead and pull a guitar here so you all can see what we're working with. Okay, so as of 1754, which will have been half hour ish ago, 220 at 11, 10 miles, 4,300 feet, few clouds, 25,000 few clouds. Okay, could very well fly a visual on this. Okay, so with this, folks, we come over here and we've got the Block 2 and the CAE in here. Okay. Now, we're planning runway 23 left. So we've got just the ILS. Let's see if there's an RNAV. And that's it. So we've got an ILS and an RNAV. Okay, so we're going to go to the ILS. Now, it is set up that you do go to Greensboro, 116.2, then on a 45 degree heading, head to Brant, outbound, till, uh, I don't know how far out we're supposed to go. Let's see if it says here. Uh, doesn't really say. 10 miles. So we'll go 10 miles outbound. Uh, make a right-hand turn to uh, zero, zero, 009 degrees. Took me a little bit too, folks, to figure out what is this. Took me seeing the degree sign to say, okay, we go out, zero, zero, 009. Make a right-hand turn. Come back 189. Re-intercept the localizer for the arrival. Okay, we'll fly it. What the heck? So that's your full procedure there, folks. So, what we'll do on the FMC, click 2-3 left. 
GSO. And that's going to take us again to the actual VOR to Brant, and we should see it taking us through it. And then we click Execute. Everything becomes active. And then on our legs page, hang on a second, Gurge. Uh, let me just look at our flight plan real quick. So it's Gurge. It's the end of the uh, Q69 Columbia. So we'll just take that, close that off. Remember, we had an altitude restriction in there. So let's go back. Okay, so we got everything programmed. We'll come back to this chart in a minute. I'm already seeing a problem. Hang on a second. Let's do this. Bear with me. Click and click and done. Okay, just to make it easier on the eyes, let's go back to the block two. All right, Tenny was a 21,000 foot restriction. Two, one, zero, zero, zero. It's going to put it in as flight level 210. Execute. Okay. Now, coming up, Sand Hills, Vacuum, Vacuum, and Block. Okay, Block will be on the next page. It's 11,000. All right, now we have a discontinuity. Let's see if it'll take. Perfect. So, now that we've got our altitude restrictions taken care of, let's go to the ILS real quick. Okay, again. Block. We'll then go to GSO. GSO to Brant. Now, it's going to put us in a procedure turn right there. I may do it myself. And I'm going to slow us down here. Let's, uh, 220. Okay. Execute. That way, the aircraft will be respectable in speed. So when we come around, we can slow it down to 170 get all the flaps out, get the gear down, set up for the approach, and then come in. All right. So we've got uh, the box worked out. Go back to here. We are 421 miles out. At about two to 300 miles, we'll actually get a TOD here. We'll verify it up because we got to make 21,000 and 11,000. Now, let's talk about this arrival. Okay, so we're on a Jepson chart. It's page 11 3, effective 20 March 20. Okay, ILS for runway 23 left. You'll see why here in a second while I chose this one. This runway, not this approach. Okay, here's the frequencies. Again, don't get mindset and have your radios ready to go to those channels. More than likely, they're not going to be them. Okay, just to warn you ahead of time. Localizer. See the identifier. Here's the frequency. That we will have to tune in. And I'm going to go ahead. At least, whoops, a little further. Oh, okay, so we got that available. We could actually put it in now. I think I will. That way, we don't forget. And it's a 234. Okay, this way we don't forget, folks. This is not my VOR1, VOR2, NAV1, NAV2, however you want to say it. It is the ILS radio. Those radios, here's NAV1, VOR1. BOR2, NAV2 are right up top here. All right, so a little different again, folks.
All right, so 109 decimal three is our localizer. 234 is our final approach to the uh, runway. Now, Brant is our initial fix, both outbound and inbound. Our inbound, Brant will put us at uh, five, six, about seven miles, oh, six miles tops, it looks like. Um, now, Brant, we got to be on the inbound leg, not going out to hit the procedure turn to come back around. Uh, 27 29. And that's where we got to be at altitude wise, and we should be on the glide slope. Decision altitude is 1089. That is where we go or no go for the landing. Not where we're stable, go or no go. Meaning, if visibility is lower than this, we ain't coming in. It's also 200 feet AGL. Airport elevation is 926. Now, this airfield does have a. Uh, hang on a second. I'm opening it up right now a cat 2 arrival so those numbers would come down i just took the cat 1 to keep it simple so if we knew we were going into less you know lower visibilities we'd do the cat 2 and it's going to probably look identical folks just tolerances are different and what the aircraft has to have the pilot and the airport Missed approach procedure, y'all can read that if you haven't already. And then here again are our transition levels and altitudes and uh, things to expect like PGSI and ILS lab part, not co coincident. Uh, simultaneous approaches are authorized, so it's we're not to be surprised if we look out the right wing and all of a sudden, hey, what's that airplane doing over there for? That's what that's all about. Okay. Again, you can see vertically, GSO to Bryant. We're going to go 045, 10 miles. Bryant, do our procedure turn, come back, and shoot the, and then come in and land. Vertically, this is how it looks, descending to 3,100 feet, descending to 2729. And then we'll follow the down this path for a three degree glide slope and at uh, 1089 we make the call go or no go then we get in a little closer and we're stable landing these are the speeds for which we'll need to you know how we can judge our f, f flight or uh, um descent rate um, feet per minute sorry had a mind fart kind of smelly too but anyway um, so in our case probably around 140 to 150 so figure about an 800 foot a minute descent and we'll achieve that three degree slope and from Brant to the missed approach we're probably looking in the ballpark of about two minutes and 15 seconds if you run the stopwatch and then finally, here's our minimums. Again, 1,089 MSL, 18 on the RVR. It's about a half mile visibility, folks. And that wraps up the charts. Now, once we're on the ground here, we are going to be parking up here. This is where FedEx goes. Now, the scenery I have isn't all that great. What do we have here? Smikey, welcome. Hope you're enjoying. Thank you for following. Uh, hope you have a great day ahead of you. Great hump day. And the rest of the week uh, just falls right into place. Okay, so again, we'll land. Uh, looking at this, I'm going to assume we're going to probably get pretty close to uh, Kilo 1 or Delta 
before we can get off taxi all the way back up into the FedEx ramp. It's not set up properly. Whoever made the ramp, fine. You know, hey, great. I'm not going to complain. We'll park where we need to. But uh, when we come out of here, we'll be in a different spot. Okay, and that wraps that up. Hang on a second. Not the greatest uh, multitasker, sorry folks. All right, so that pretty much gives you an idea of what we're gonna be shooting here. Let's bring Top Cat up. Okay, so see, this is where t textures and all aren't gonna load right, that's fine. I'll figure that out. I never can find the uh, textures I need to fix. Okay, Top Cat is a takeoff landing performance calculation tool. This is what I use to generate V speeds and landing speeds. <clears throat> so we're in the landing mode now here. We'll do a quick update. Make sure nothing changed. Winds are still the same. Everything's the same. Okay, we're going to have anti-ice off, auto land. I turned that on just to get better, better numbers and an auto three on our brakes. Make sure we're on two, three left. Gives you the specs here as well and any uh, procedures we need to know about. If you have inoperative items, otherwise, uh, uh, equipment problems you can put those in here and it will adjust for them and it is payware all right so it is calling us the landing speed of 144 coming in at 150 like i thought all right so i do want to write it down So 144, 149, all right. And then we can come right over here, click Int Ref. And what are we going for? 144, we'll click it, put it in there. That's close enough. ILS matches. And uh, here we come. Let's see, where are we? Izu and Gorge. So we're getting within uh, 60 miles of, uh, of uh, Columbia. Or the end of our route, then we're direct to Columbia. My bad. Also, 167 miles now from top of descent. So now would be a time, folks, if you need to grab a soda, grab a restroom break. Because from here on, uh, frame rate wise, yes, I've been getting, I don't have that set up to show, but um, usually I, I don't have any stuttering issues at all. Now, mind you, I uh, have a, a rig that I had set up last year for streaming and for running X Plane and. Um, FSX or prepared. So it pretty much doesn't get hampered yet. And I also haven't really loaded it down yet either. Other than this problem with textures, which I'm going to have to figure out now that I have Sam, I probably have to get different textures in there to keep that error message from coming up. But we're still good for landing. But yeah, it's a great plane. I have the, uh, hang on a second. Uh, as soon as I can pull it up here, where it is. Yep, 
There it is. Uh, the version I have is the extended version, so I got the freighter with it as well. And then I also uh, purchased the uh, liveries for both North American passenger and the cargo liveries. So, I spent all in all somewhere a little over a hundred bucks. Okay, that's a tough question to ask, uh, answer there, uh, Semke. Um, frame rate wise, no. Thank you, Mr. Marcus. Thank you. Welcome to the audience. Thank you, Mr. Marcus. We welcome you aboard. <laughs> no. Um, frame rate. Frame rate wise. I don't have any trouble with either. My old problems with Zebo went away when I updated to 3.3 or 3.5, um, where you'd walk away to get a cup of coffee, use the bathroom real quick, get back in, and she's crashed on the ground. That was an actual bug somewhere in it. I don't know the exact causes of it. They seem to have gotten rid of it. Knock on wood, knock on my head, that's wood too. Um, you know. So, but framework rate wise, I don't really have that big of a problem right now. Um, rig's only about a year old, and uh, it isn't really bogged down with much stuff. So, I hope I was able to answer that for you. Um, we are going to be flying the Zebo here soon. Hold on a second, I want to get into the cockpit here. I don't want to get. I got to start checking our top of descent here. Uh, let's see here. The next time we hit the Zebo will be. Oh, actually, it's not as quick as I thought. Looks like uh, the Tuesday. Oh, wait a minute. I th yeah, the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. So, uh, which will be the 30th of November. Because I know a lot of y'all are not in the U.S. to celebrate it. So, that's the next time I'm scheduled to fly it. Not to say I may not do an airplane swap before then. But yeah, my frames seem to do pretty good. And that's a heck of a plane, the Zebo. Um, so, let's see here. We're just over Savannah right now. Let's see what it looks like from the air. That's one place I want to get out and revisit. Uh, I was at... This is where I get confused. I was out there in the uh, early to mid-80s. If those of you are familiar with and around back then, um, when Grenada... Uh, we went into Grenada to rescue some people and all. Uh, I was actually with my air guard unit at Savannah on a... Uh, just a deployment with our A-7 aircraft uh, in the firehouse. And uh, really thought it was just brand new into the military. Thought for sure they were going to be spark buds and say, Hey, guess what? He's new. Send him to Grenada. <laughs> Thank God they did. <laughs> I had already had a lot of firsts already happen in Savannah. Almost had my first crash of an F4. Uh, a couple of other big emergencies happened. So yeah, and my firefighting career lit off pretty good in the Air National Guard. The reason the F4 almost crashed, as you can see, uh, the topography of the area would be good for a little animal called seagulls. We all know seagulls from Sully and the miracle on the Hudson. Well, he took one, not in the engine, although I think he did. Um, more importantly, it came through his cockpit, hit him, threatened to punch out. Oh yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> it was a great, great trip. <laughs> Learned a lot, like I said. Learned a lot. 
so. Uh, those were the good old days. This, that's what they call it, I believe. Alright, so you can see we're starting to slowly put the ocean behind us as we head up towards Columbia. So, between here and Columbia, we will have started our descent. Now, where I lived as a kid, I'm not sure if we'll be able to... S oh, right there. Might be Charleston. Anyway, I lived in Charleston when I was 10 years old. Uh, during the bicentennial uh, 200 years of the country. Uh, beautiful city, folks. If you ever are in the United States, I highly recommend it. Uh, very beautiful uh, sea, uh, ocean city. All right, so there's Gurge. We are now direct uh, Columbia. What I'm going to do... Actually, we're okay. Let's get this rehacked up. Now 100 miles out. Let's start in on some of the uh, checklist items here. So seatbelt signs. Eh, the cargo's not too unruly back there yet, so we'll keep them free about to move about the cabin. Uh, we've already got our frequency and course set in on the uh, ILS panel. We've already got our speeds entered. 145.30. We'll set our auto brake a little closer in, so as will the uh, altitude of uh, 21,000. Uh, let's see. Yes, by Tenny. So that will be definitely, yeah, we'll cross uh, Columbia before we get to that. progress you kind of see that average wind how we're crabbing to stay on course so it's a crabby flight folks I don't think that's Charleston I think it's a little further up but anyway um, the only thing that was kind of making me think that was this big inlet here, but it should have been on the other side as well. But anyway, we're in that area of Charleston, South Carolina, so. Ah, yeah, I would love to live there, folks, but it's a little pricey. They're available for you all to use those uh, sound alerts with your chat points, or if you want to send a few bits our way, there's some other ones as well. Flying a plane is no different than riding a bicycle. Just a lot harder to put baseball cards in the spokes. Eventually, we will have to sink as we descend in. And J Drum's uh, double ot is our moderator, human moderator. We have the uh, Autobots of 
Streamlabs, Stream Elements, and Nightbot joining us as well. Together, they are not the transporters. Get a nice close-up here before we start heading down. Speaking of next flights, um, I am scheduled to uh, fly another flight after this up in Alaska. In the uh, Piper Navajo, we'll be going from Fairbanks over to Northway, I believe it's called. Let me uh, do a quick look here, and then we'll see where we stand. Uh, P-A-O-R. Called Northway. It's about a 90 to 100 or so mile run. Weather in Fairbanks, just for those curious, well, could be better. Broken at 1800, Let's see a mile and three quarters in light snow. Overcast 3800 feet, and it's uh, a balmy. Hang on a second. Uh, uh, minus 15 degrees Celsius, or five above zero depending how you want to look at it, in Fahrenheit. Now, fun story about Fahrenheit and Celsius. We had a uh, exchange student and uh, uh, trying to get her activated because winter was getting close to St. Louis. Our winters can be finicky. Some, some years we can have a lot of snow and some years we could be mild, so to speak, meaning slight above above normals and some years way below normals be in fact a couple of you know below zero like Fahrenheit now there's where the fun part was um, <clears throat> I was trying to help her understand um, how our weather will look to her. now I know she was coming from uh, uh, Europe so you guys are on Celsius so I told her be very careful. We, when you see zero degrees on our forecast here, it's not 32 degrees Fahrenheit because there's zero is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. No, it's zero degrees Fahrenheit. It's cold. <laughs> and looking at my chart here, that puts it at uh, roughly minus, we'll call it 17 degrees Celsius. Her eyes just got like uh, that deer in the headlight look. Yeah, it was a Kodak moment all the way. So, which we would be the same. This ain't cold. It's zero degrees outside. Come on, this ain't bad. <laughs> yeah, for us it's 32 degrees here in the states. All right, so here we go. We got top of display showing on the nav display, 40 miles out. Let's get ready to bring this plane home. All right. Okay, so we got the auto brakes. We'll go ahead and set them now to three, just because I don't want to forget our DH. Uh, we're going to keep it at 200 for the uh, above ground. And uh, frequencies are set 109.3, 234, and we're going to set 21 up here. Whoops.
Okay, as soon as we round the curve here at uh, Columbia, get wings level, we'll probably go ahead and initiate our descent. We're just publishing a uh, clip so it's out there for y'all to watch as we come around the horn here and prepare to set up for our descent which is now 10 miles or so out maybe 20 yeah 17 miles out okay So once we get to 10, I'm going to go ahead and initiate. Since we don't have ATC yet bothering with us. Let's go ahead. Okay, we're starting our descent. It loves to do this. All right, and then we just do this. Pull her back to 80, and we'll start in. All right. Okay, the, the cargo's been unruly enough here. Time for them to get back in their pallets and strapped in. All right, folks, we are now starting in for our arrival. One last check, seatbelt sign is on. Uh, frequency and course set. Uh, flap speed, just double checking to make sure is set. Uh, verified V ref at 145. That's good. And auto brake at 3. DH on here is 200. And frequencies and headings set in our radio. All right. So we're watching our descent. Uh, Big thing is Tenya, Tenny at 21,000. This radar is showing ground terrain. This one, if there was any, would be weather. Just to kind of reacclimate everyone since we've been taking a look at the 
beautiful flight factor 767. That's Columbia behind us. Come on down at about 300 here. Okay, now this descent profile shows us past Tenya, or Tenny, so we're going to steepen it up. Looks like a pretty good path right there. Here's how I'm telling. This is where the onboard avionics is projecting us to be at 21,000. Could go a little higher. Now, the big thing here is we have to watch our speed. We don't want it to get too far up here. we That's where the speed brakes come in handy. All right, well, we want to thank everybody that's come aboard today from, uh, I'm hoping I'm saying it right, Semik, Semik, Semki, and uh, our follows from, can't find it, where is it here? It's my computer behaving like this. And the follows that we had off of, um, Semkey and uh, it's Mario 1023. So hope you all have a great day. Great conversation so far for the day. We'll see if uh, we can't go ahead and turn this into the Navajo as well. Coming out of Alaska. And also had a conversation with Hetman Triple Seven. Hope to, hope you're having all having an awesome Wednesday, as I call Hump Day. Hump Day. All right, so we're getting down. Still looking like we're going to be a little bit past uh, teaming, and uh, then we'll uh, head for our next restriction, which is 11,000. Might actually get to continue, so that might not be a bad thing. Now let's see here. Center is up. Uh, let's pull up uh, X pilot. Oh, what's well, not? Nice. Oh, well, let's see here. Oh, man. It's like about 45 minutes ago, folks, and I never heard this. Helsinki was looking for some pilots uh, to do a CPT. Yes, he's going after his tower. Approach. S3 rating on approach. So... Those of you out there, he may still be looking for traffic. No center is available at this time, so we will continue in on Unicom. And right now, I'm going to go ahead and start dialing us down. As we're getting close to the front range of the uh, Appalachian Mountains here in the U.S.,
All right. We're going to do kind of move into a somewhat sterile cockpit. And uh, we're going to let the one song just play so it doesn't distract. And just keep working our way down. Here's 23,000. And we're over Tenny right now. So we're going to set... Oh, we're at 21. We're going to set for 11. go on VNAV at this point. And 250 we'll need to slow up at, at our next, uh, which is block. But folks, we'd love for you to fly along. You know, always would. We are working to get a group flight going. Um, it's going to be uh, coming up here shortly. I haven't set a date yet on it. I'm still kind of wondering what people are wanting to fly. Um, I've got a couple of routes out there uh, on our Discord channel. Uh, feel free to head over there and cast a vote. I think I'm going to let it go until... Um, well, let's see. I'm trying to see what day we are. I think uh, Thanksgiving. I'll call it off and where the votes land uh, is where we're going to land. Now, the routes that you see set up uh, can go either way. So, for instance, Birmingham to Philly. If you want to go Philly to Birmingham, that's fine. Same thing with uh, Naples, Italy to Lake Geneva, Switzerland. can be the other way around. What I'm looking for is to try to challenge, get a little bit of a challenge out to y'all. The other one is a challenge, Miami to Tonkaten, Honduras. I think that would be best that way. If you've never flown the approach into Tonkaten, folks, it is fun. Especially if runway, I think it's 2-0 is up. Maybe it's runway 2, whatever. It is amazing. And it is not easy. It's all about speed and being dead on on those turns. Uh, same with, uh, well, I also threw in Salt Lake Edmonton because of the scenery. And that was the same thing with Naples to uh, Lake Geneva. Coming into the Swiss Alps, some of you will have scenery that'll be mesmerizing. Me, I have default. And it's still mesmerizing to this guy, this 56-year-old. So let me uh, take some time here. I'm going to put my prediction in. And that's the format, folks. Just simply put the exclamation mark, the word predict, the minus key afterwards, put a space in there first, then the minus key, and then whatever number you want for the landing. Okay, so we're coming up to... Sand Hills.
Okay, we just rounded the corner through 15,000. And our descent is right on track. Now, let me uh, revisit something here. Um, as you look here, now yesterday, or not yesterday, the day before, we were flying the Airbus and we were needing to keep our airspeed, which was right here, the green dot in between it. Well, this is Boeing's idea. They have this little scale here on your nav display and this uh, diamond is to, you're below, you're above. So it's really like an ILS and you're just keeping it there. The green dot is right here. You keep it between the lines. So, anyway, just wanted to point that out since uh, probably a lot of confusion. We're going to go ahead now, get ready for the approach. 10,000 feet. Transition level will come in here. So we got, uh, oh boy, what was it? 21, I believe. Latest and greatest, 3021. There's the altitude disagree. And we're now set up. Okay, so we're almost there. Now we got to slow to 150 lights on. Okay. And now, here's where we head to Greensboro. Okay, we're going to come over Greensboro no lower than 3,100 feet. Okay, I'm going to try for 5,000 and then we'll head on out to Brandt. Okay, we're going to make 11,000 with no trouble at all. And I am going to get us now slowing. We'll utilize level flight here for a moment to help us slow down. Okay. And we'll couple it with speed brakes. Just about there. Let's go ahead to send now to six or five thousand. All right, so we need to get the speed brakes back up. All right, the big thing now is watching speeds. I'm going to head us down a little steeper than normal. If we need it, we'll put the speed brakes to work. Okay. Okay, I can back off the descent here. That's pretty good right there. All right. Now you can see how this depicts. We'll come into GSO, out to Brant, hit our procedure turn, come back in and land. Huh. Our CF is behind Brant. Hang on. Let's take a look at that. I'll be doggone.
Well, that'll work for me even better. I'll make sure it executes it, though. Okay. All right, folks, we'd love for you to put some guesses in and see what your luck is like. When you fly with Mike, you never know what'll happen on landing. Okay, currently four minutes out. Greensboro is right now 20 miles, I believe. Let's pull that up. Yeah, 20 miles. like this song. It's uh, Scent. Uh, Goodbye Gravity is the group that did it. I really love the song. Guess you couldn't tell. Okay, here we are leveling near 5,000. Okay, got a little bit of that cloudiness. We're expecting at around 4,300 feet ahead of us. So... that in. Okay. Now as we come off GSO, I'm going to slow us to 220. And I'm going to go ahead for safety. We're going to put on the uh, engine bleeds. Even though there's not supposed to be rain here, let's be safe. We're not worried about freezing temperatures, but, you know, you never know what we're going to run across. Let's kind of get a lay of the land. I believe our airport is right up here, folks. Speed brakes are off. It turn that off because it's driving me nuts when it does that. Leveling at five. Distance to GSO. Seven miles. Let's go ahead and slow. Okay, and that's going to put us right below flap speed, which is perfect because as soon as we initiate it, I'm going to kick out one notch of flaps and uh, carry that uh, until we turn inbound and then we'll get her into the 10 degree range. When we line up and start coming in and we grab the glide slope, gear will come down, flaps will begin to roll out full and uh, there we go. Let's go ahead and dial this down. Okay, GSO turn now. Okay, first notch of flaps coming in. Let's 
see the airport right ahead of us, folks. So there's the runway we're coming in on. gonna pull this one back one more Off. basically we're now tracking out to Brant while we slow Okay, here comes 3,100. Okay, so there we go. this as we're really are bobbling here. Go ahead and put flaps five. As we approach Brant, okay folks, again, if you really would like, put a prediction in. Love to see uh, what you're thinking we can do here. We're still on the autopilot. However, uh, Getting a little cautious here. Okay, we just crossed Brant. We're heading out to catch the procedure turn. Okay, and again, it's 109.3 for our inbound course of a frequency for the localizer 234 inbound. Outbound is uh, 054. Okay. Pressing on, heading out. Well, maybe I will turn terrain just to be safe. Never know. Okay, there we go into the procedure turn. Now when the wings come level, it's a one minute outbound run. What we're going to do here, we're going to watch our gauge here when we're level. We'll click chrono and just see if it works. And folks, so far, it's been an hour and a half in the air. Here we come. One minute. Okay, we're 30 seconds into the outbound leg, which on the chart, if you were seeing this, would be the back end of the legs. Okay, coming up on 15 seconds to go.
Time to turn. Sure, we're still LNAV. We're still not turning. 189. Okay. All right, so here we go, turning around a little late. I figured the FMC would pick that up. It did not. Something for you all to think about. All right, and what we're going to do here once we get inbound, we're going to set it up for the localizer, making sure we're still showing it like we are. Right now, we're 24 miles out. I th no. Correction, we are not. Okay, here comes uh, 189. There's the glide slope. There's the localizer approach. Slow us up to 210. Then I'm going to slow to 180 as we start rolling, as soon as we grab the localizer. Neat little airport out here. Not much to it, but pretty neat, nonetheless. Okay, the approach is on. Sure, we turn. We've had a problem with that with the 7 4. Perfect. Okay. Once we're wings level, I'm going to slow to 160, using the level flight as a way to make it easier to slow down without using my speed brakes. Okay. And approach is 150, so we'll let her slow down here. We're on localizer. Oh, excuse me, folks. All right, there we are on the chart again. All right, so we are lining up here, folks. And as soon as I see the glide slope on the move, Go to flaps 10. Go ahead and go to flaps 10 now. Okay, let's get our approach checklist uh, running. Uh, again, lights are on, speed brake armed. All you got to do is click on it, folks. Uh, VNAV, RNAV, okay, we've got control of the speed. We're set for 160. Retaining. Thirty-one hundred. Okay, on final. Verify localizer and glide slope armed. Localizer is active. 
uh, MCP approach is on. Uh, when the glide slope is alive, which technically it is, they say gear down. I'll wait till it's we're on glide path. Remember, folks, we're close to a thousand feet above sea level here, so 3,100 feet is about 1,100 feet above sea level. We'll ballpark it. Uh, speed brakes are armed. Auto land at, uh, make sure we're green at 1,500, or 500, sorry. We'll be off of it probably by then. Okay, we're at 160, flaps 10. Looking for the runway. Okay, coming up to Brant. Again, we should be in our descent by Brant at 27, 29. Here comes the glide slope. Let's go ahead and slow to 149. Runway in sight, right there. Okay, glide slope localizer active. Gear down. Flaps 20. Okay. Currently 1870 uh, above ground. We're good. Uh, Piedmont Triad. Traffic uh, FedEx 811 Heavy Type 767. Gear down, final, two, three left. Okay, on glide path up a little, little below. See if she uh, makes up for it. Going 25 degrees on the flaps. 1,500 feet, land three green, we could auto land. What's all the fun in that? Going flaps full, final checks. Okay, we're glide slopes active, localizer active, flaps 30 and 30. Speed One brakes arm three green. Glide slope. Yeah, we're going to have to. Glide slope. Wide slope. Wide slope. Wide slope. Okay, we're gonna Wide take slope. over. Wide slope. Wide slope. Wide slope. Wide slope. Wide slope. Wide slope. He's up on the dive planes here. Get her back into configuration, 150. Brake set three. 500. Three green, cleared to land. Stable. High. Okay, we're going to be landing long. 100. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Okay, get a little reverse in. Eighty. I have the brakes. Yeah, I figured we'd probably eat up some runway here. And we're gonna go almost to the end, folks.
really tried to make that taxiway, but it just wasn't going to be. For Kilo 1, we're going to end up at Delta, which is fine. We ate up uh, oh, about uh, three to 3,500 feet of runway, so kind of expected it at the end. Well, while we're rolling out here, Folks, 277 was the feet per minute. It's not a bad landing, folks. We'll get the dynamics here in a minute as soon as we clear. And the auto land may not have been as good, being that it was already out of whack on parameters. Okay. And Piedmont Triad Airport, uh, FedEx 811 Heavy, Type 767 clear. 23 left on Delta, 2 Kilo, 2 FedEx. Okay, flaps up. Okay, speed brakes down and auto brakes off. All right, after landing, uh, autopilot auto throttles are off. Left and right flight directors are off. And auto brake and speed brake uh, off and down. Lights, strobes off, runway lights off. Okay, let's get the APU uh, working its way on. Hit the right switch, Mike. That's not a 747. All right, so long taxi. Basically back taxiing. 10,000, uh, we'll call it 9,000 to 9,500 feet. So got a ways to go, folks. All right, while the uh, APU's coming up, uh, we'll get the transponder, transponding in the TA mode. that in menu menu all right APU is available so that means we can go ahead I'm gonna click the, the bleed on but for now we're gonna just bring it in under uh, the engines and yes folks we'll take a look at that landing it got a little little on the hairy side with the auto land system so the autopilot got a little squirrely on us but anyway again truly thanks to uh, Semkey uh, Sem for following as well as um, and I lost my page again um, it's Mario 1023. Now that's an easy, you know, I would should be able to remember that. Uh, another funny story with exchange students. We had two. Uh, we had one, uh, both from Europe. One, Luigi. See, Mario, Luigi. Should have remembered it. And yes, he got chided quite a bit here in the States for that. But uh, anyway, good kids, both of them, all around. Uh, although diametrically different personalities it was amazing luigi very outgoing uh personality our um paula our other one she was a little more reserved more kept things inside which you know i mean i'm not going to fault any of them folks i mean they're away from home for a year 
to some of us. Hello! Yippee! Party time! I know that feeling. Um, and to some, are, you know, they're away from home. <laughs> they're friends and everything. So, anyway, uh, we had a great time. Highly recommend if you're thinking about being a, uh, um exchange parent where you exchange student especially if you have kids that also want to go over that's what i've heard is when it's the best we didn't do that part we just hosted them coming over so it was fun folks we truly appreciated each of their uh personalities and i'm here to tell you uh, paula was one that uh you couldn't tell she was from austria she had better American English than Americans. So, and I'm even talking to highfalutin, snooty, snooty ones that think they're above everyone. She could put them in the ground in English. So, great job there. Anyway, we continue our taxi here on Kilo. Uh, wait a minute. Juliet, my bad. We're on Juliet. Oh, well, I got everyone confused here. That's cool. Love it when flying with Mike can do that. All right. I just know go north, young man. Go north. Once you cross the pole, go south. Go south. All right. Kind of get an idea? No. Where the first FedEx plane is? No, that's not where we're parking. We're actually beyond that. The, this is a, a regional hub for FedEx. What that means is, okay, you got Memphis and you got Indianapolis, these megalopolis hubs, much like uh, Delta's, oh no, that's a little overkill, Delta in Atlanta or Minneapolis or Detroit. But for the super hub that Memphis is, this is a smaller hub that they use to feed the airports around. And that, that could go as high as Newark and Boston or Buffalo and Cleveland. But they feed them from here. So that way, let's just say you have a package in Cleveland that needs to get to, or to uh, Tallahassee. Well, instead of funneling it through Memphis uh, or Indianapolis, it goes to here to there. And let's say it's during the day. It's, you know, it's an overnight. It has to be there tomorrow. And you just gave it to them. Well, they leave. They got into to here. Then it'll get to there in the morning. So this is more of a daytime sorting place. So it's really, you know, I like, you know, it's a neat little airport. Aside from the fact they don't park this way, folks, they park like this one does. And that's the wrong airline. UPS is right there folks but again you know hey somebody made a better version of it so hey power to you unfortunately if I remember right you should be able to taxi in this way but all of this stuff's in the way so you got to go down come in that way but yeah you would normally go right up here and into the ramp park both sides of it and yes, they have uh, 208s and ATRs operating out of here as well. Again, it's made for those smaller airports to feed here, to feed the hub, to feed the rest. All right, so... By the way, UPS's regional hub in the area back in Columbia, they also have one out here. And again, just meant to be an intermediate because you may want a package to go from, say, Tallahassee to uh, Myrtle Beach. Well, instead of sending it all the way over to Memphis or Louisville, in the case of UPS, comes into to these regionals and they'll get it out to them. 
So it's a little bit like it is regional. All right, so here we come, folks. We'll make the turn here. And what I'm going to do is just park right next to that uh, UPS, only because it looks simpler. Guess I could take it all the way down. And we'll just park right over there. Get those taxi lights off. You see how you should be able to go straight out and there's ladders and stuff in the way. Again, yeah, we're not going to call out the maker or anything, folks. I'm just glad there was scenery for here because default was really horrible. Matter of fact, I don't even remember if this was even on it. So... brakes are set all right folks let's get to the shutdown checklist all right shut down parking brakes verify they're on okay parking brakes are on engine selectors to off cargo can now move about the cabin as they so choose Fuel selectors off. Oh, hang on, Mike. You forgot to turn the generator on. There we go. Yeah, that was... Okay. Uh, that's why you turn the generator on when it tells you to, folks. Just tip from flying with Mike. Okay. Fuel pumps off, GPU chocks, gates, and we're set, folks. Welcome in. Uh, do want to thank you for flying with Mike today. Uh, stand by. We're just going to clean up a few things. Thing I did not check while we were flying. Little late. What the heck? change the map. I really like that FedEx Express. Good job. And where am I on the map? Uh, there I am. Arrived. That's a really nice map. Okay. Uh, the, by the way, folks, I've uh, been talking about it all day. The website, the FedEx Express, hang on, I just got to take out the S here. Doink. That's if you are uh, thinking about joining a VA, they are really good. We'll stop and log. Cool. And refresh. All right. So yeah, really good VA folks. If you're really looking for uh, someone to join, they would be good for you. They're really good. They do want you to know how to fly a little bit, but that's as far as the little bit goes. 
Uh, let us, let's see, we got that turned off. Let me make sure nobody's trying to join me up here. Does not appear so, so we're going to come off Fat Sim. Either way, I get kicked off no matter what. And, okay, so everything, oh, and uh, Sim Toolkit. Oh yeah, I forgot Volanta was running. All right, so we are on Volanta as well. Real quick before we uh, turn this into the reverse, I want to bring Sim Toolkit over. And I also want to thank uh, Melvin Leroy. Uh, he's a streamer. Uh, he likes to stream GA, but oh, don't don't let that fool you. He'll throw a, a curveball at you every now and then and put the uh, heavy iron in the air or a three-holer and not heavy. So here's where we are. I'm going to go to this thing he pointed out to me. It's called Landing Reports. Here's our latest and greatest. If you just click in the gray area, here's how we came in and this shows where we landed. So yeah, we were still in the landing zone area, pushing close to the end. Uh, however, uh, vertically we came in 277 feet per minute. Speed 136, uh, VREF was 144, so a little, little slow. G-Force uh, right on 1.1, so very, should when we watch this, really be hard to tell we were on the ground. But it's a neat feature that's in Sim Toolkit under landing reports. The big thing showing you where in relation to the center line. Hard to tell, but that black line there, folks, is the, not that one. Uh, no, that's not me burning to some of you all. <laughs> Uh, but right there is your center line, I'm slightly to the right of it. But really neat tool. Thanks again, Melvin Leroy, for uh, pointing that out. Hang on a second while we finish that up. Again, 277. All right. So now we'll pull Sim Toolkit away. And let's back the truck up, so to speak. Let's watch this approach. Get out just a tad more and pause. Of course, folks, we have to have the kind of music one expects for an arrival. How about the grand finale? How about we pause that, rewind. Let's get some volume. Okay, we're on our way and pushed. We already know what it looked like in the cockpit, folks. Let's watch it from here. Okay, it's going to look a little raggedy and bumpy as I speed her up inbound. Laps are now full. I always, for some reason, like this side when we come in. And here we go. Flared a little early. Oh my, you couldn't even tell when it landed, folks. Oh, wow. Well, that minus 277 is kind of hard to believe. Let's take her back out again.
punch out this wing and see how it looks. Going by the FedEx ramp. Well, you could kind of tell when she hit the ground. I had a hard time telling I was on the ground. Wow. Well done. I have to say, that was a good landing. Really good compared to what we've seen of late from flying with Mike. Let's come back out and look at the other way, shall we? the runway. Yeah, we are just on the center line with that main. Boom. Yeah, I had a hard time telling I was on the ground. Reverse. Wow. That was a really good landing, folks. Uh, I, I will say, that was really good. Uh, really, thank you all for flying with Mike here. Um, I am going to go offline. Get a couple things taken care of before we uh, set up for the uh, Navajo flight. Now my favorite arrival. I call this the JD Drum or J Drums approach picture. He would love to be able to out, be out there and take pictures like that. Let's do that again. Look at that, folks. Just love it. That almost tells me I need to go out somewhere. We're going to have to do that flight soon. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Alright, folks. We're going to take it out one more time. Let's take a look. Alright folks, well, we're going to wrap it up now. Like I said, we're going to reset uh, and come back online with the uh, Nava. Thanks for flying with Mike today, folks. Like I said, here in a, about an hour or two, we're going to kick on the uh, Navajo fly up in Alaska. Thanks for flying with Mike. If you like the channel, we had two today. Follow us, Simkey, and it's Mario1023. Thank you all for following us. Really appreciate you all coming along and flying with us. We'd love to see you in the air with us. Uh, Hint will be at uh, Fairbanks next. Again, Piper Nava. Folks, thank you for flying with Mike and uh, hope to see you up there in Alaska, if not on our next flight afterwards. God bless you all. Y'all have a great day. And now I am going to try and find us a good channel. Uh, head over to uh, let's see here let's head over to Hawker Driver looks like he's up in uh, Cessna or Piper one of the two so hope y'all enjoy the, the flight with him like I said, about an hour or two, we'll be back on with the uh, uh, Piper Devo. Have a great day. God bless.
Um, to do that, we're 